Alright, welcome back to Outmouse Labs. My name is Penny and I'm glad you're here. So today I'm going to be doing a coding tutorial for RPG Maker MZ. We're going to be looking at some plugin tutorials. I know there's been some ask for those recently, so I'm going to put one up. So I've been working on a game that uses skill checks, like from Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and you can do that with events, absolutely. But it's pretty cumbersome, both the events being very, very long and kind of confusing looking, and it's a slow process to event. So it's a little bit easier to do a plugin. So I have a functional plugin for doing skill checks. I'm going to walk you through how I made it, and I'm going to post it for you to use if you'd like in your own game. So first of all, let's take a look at what we're building. So I just have a demo here. And what we have is if we check this barrel, there our character Fox is going to try to use survival. In this case, failed. Over here, you can see they rolled a 13, which results in a fail. Now, we can keep trying. A 12 is also a fail. An 11 is a fail. A 13 is a fail. There we go. And a 17 is a success. So we can set all, all of these options in the plugin. I'm going to show you how that works. And then we can determine what's going to be a success in this instance as also as well as what skill to use so it's very versatile and then if it's a success we use eventing to change what it looks like okay so that's what we're going to be building let's take a look all right so first of all i'll show you how it's set up and then i'll show you how it's built so it's set up down here and we have a name of course we have an author we have uh, what it does a description and then the help it's pretty simple. So the only uh, parameter is the variable assigned to the result. So I just have it set to one and that's the default. To actually use it, over here we have a plugin command. And that plugin command is tied to the skill. It's called roll a skill check. And it asks for your minimum number for success or your DC in D&D &D terms. And then what variable? And then I have it set so it asks you which variable in a way that you can do it visually instead of having to just memorize it. So right now I just have survival and diplomacy. Once it's set up and you run the plugin command, if the check result, which is the variable we set in the parameters, equals one, so if it's true, then success shows that window. If it's not one, it'll be zero. Um, then it's a fail. So pretty simple to set up once it's being used. Uh, so I will be posting that for you to use or you can make your own. Speaking of making your own, let's get to the main part here. All right, just give me a minute to pull it up. I'm gonna open up our folder. I use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever editor you prefer, but I do find Visual Studio Code to be pretty effective for my needs. Okay, and I'm going to make it bigger so that y'all can see it. And we'll give ourselves some more screen real estate. Okay, so starting with the top, we just have the standard name of the plugin and the name of the file. We have our at target MZ. So this tells the, it tells the editor that this is for MZ, not MV. Um, then we have our at plugin description. This is, again, this is all JS doc. Uh, specialized for this purpose. This will show up in that description window in the editor. You'll notice it says the same thing. Author, self-explanatory, at author, at mouse labs, at help, and then the name of the file. Okay, just to show you, the file is right there, and it needs to be exact in most cases. There's some cases where it doesn't, but by keeping it exact, you also eliminate confusion. So once the help file starts, you can start putting in information. We fill in how the plugin works, and then we get down to our first command. At command means it's a command. Its name is skill check. So this is going to be our plugin command in the editor. The text word is to roll a skill check. The description command that determines if a skill check was successful. And the default is one. The arg. For our, uh, for our command is a target number. So if you think about the plugin commands, you have the command itself, what its name is, and then you have the, the arguments that you set. So one of them is target number. The text is the minimum number for success. The description is a number that checks that checks must be greater than to be a success, which you saw. It's of type number. It has a minimum value of zero and a default of value of 11. Because my system is based on 3D6s, the most common number is a, an 11 or 12 on a roll. So the default is the most common number. 
Then we have another arg, which is the skill variable. This is the skill we're using. And this text variable assigned to the skill being checked. Description assigned game variable for skill. Type variable, which is what it brings up the window so you can pick the variable instead of saying like type number where you'd have to memorize the number. Minimum of zero, default of zero. Okay. Finally, we have a param for our a parameter for our plugin. There we go. Uh, check result variable. If that in the plugin menu is the one parameter that determines what our result will be set to. The text, the description, the type is again number, minimum zero, default zero. And that's it for our JS docs. Now we're gonna get into the plugin itself. So I had a question from somebody recently asking why I change styles between videos on how to structure a plugin. Honestly, it's because I'm learning. And I have decided that this style, which I have used before, is the one I'm going to stick to. I like it best. But really, however you want to structure your plugin is fine. There's definitely different ways of doing it. The way that I'm going to be doing it from now on, though, is checking to see if there is a tag for me. So I create a variable named AML, Outmouse Labs. And it's going to be equal to Outmouse Labs, if it already exists, AML, or a new object. Then I have a dice rolling function that I've created. Now remember, I'm using 3D6, not like a D20. So aml.roll3d6, it is a function. I'm going to say let, which is a local variable to this function, roll equals zero. Let result, which is a, again a local variable, zero. And then I'm going to do a for loop. So a for loop iterates through so many times um, depending on what you set it. So this says for i equals zero colon, or excuse me, semicolon, i is less than three, i plus plus, which is a bit of JavaScript gobbledygook. So what it actually means is for some iterator, which I've named i for iterator, starting at zero, as long as that iterator is less than three, go up by one each loop. During the loop, we're going to do roll. So that's our variable up here. Roll is going to be set to math.floor, which is the uh, rounded down of math.random times six minus one plus one plus one. This formula is a standard JavaScript formula that results in a number between one and six. The floor makes it an integer between one and six, so it can't be like 1.2. We're going to assign result to roll, and then it's going to start the loop over. It's going to do that three times. So three times we're going to get a roll value that's going to be added to result. The final result after three times is 3d6 added together. Then we're going to return, which means we're going to give back to the program result. So whatever it calculates the three dice to be, that's the number it gives us back. Then we're going to do our plugin logic, which is fairly simple. First, we're going to create a constant, which is another type of variable, essentially. It's a variable that's not meant to change, but in JavaScript you can change it, so be careful, which we're going to call plugin name. And this is going to be equal to the name of our file without .js at the end. So exactly the same as our file without .js at the end. Then we're going to do const parameters. You can name these whatever you want, but these names are what, it's, what it is, so it kind of makes sense. We want that parameter, since it's supposed to be a number, to be a number from our parameters, because our parameters is equal to plugin manager dot parameters plugin name. So this is a command from RPG Maker MZ that says find all the parameters in this plugin file. There's only one in this case. So this says once you find that parameter, apply it to the variable check result, make sure it's a number, and if there is something there, make it that number, otherwise make it zero. Next, we're going to register our command since we have a plugin command. So plugin, .ma plugin manager register command again is from RPG Maker MZ. It takes the name of the plugin, which we have in our variable, the name of the command, which is skill check, any arguments that apply to it. Now, how do we know what arguments apply to it? That's from up top, right? So since the command is here, this argument and this argument, which are underneath it before another command, must belong to it. So two arguments. So take whatever arguments it finds and let's give them names. So skill variable is one of the commands it finds. Number args.skill variable. Const target number equals number args.target number. So please, you know, we're saying computer put the argument into this variable name so we can use it later and make sure that it's a number. 
Okay. Then let, reminding that let is a uh, local scoped variable, so it doesn't compete with the, say, let role from earlier. It's just this one uh, that only applies down here. Let role equals AML dot roll 3D6 plus game variables dot value skill variable. Okay, so what does that mean? That is saying roll AML dot roll 3D6 is our function. So it's saying we're going to roll and it's going to be that function which returns 3D6 worth of numbers. So let's say it was uh, three sixes. So it will return 18 plus game variables dot value. This is how we look at variables inside the editor. So when you go to like variable one, variable two, variable three, those are game variables dot value. And then skill variable, which we set in our plugin command via the arg. So if we've set, for instance, survival to variable two, it would be let roll AML dot roll 3D6. So we got three sixes, that's an 18, plus game variables dot valuable skill variable, whatever value is in variable two in the editor. Let's say it was two, that would give you a total of 20. Now console.log roll just puts the number in the console, which you can get to while te play testing your game by pressing F8 or F12. And that's just for you to check that your plugin is working. It's like the print statement in most other languages. Finally, we're gonna check if we were successful. So if our roll, this roll that we just made, is greater than or equal to the target number, which is an argument that we have set in our plugin command, then game variables dot set value. So we're going to set the value of one of our game variables. Which variable? The variable check result, which is from our parameters that we set in the plugin plugin window in the editor, right? We're going to set that to one. And remember back in the editor, if it's set to one, it's true. We do the success condition console.log success so that we can remind ourselves it's a success. Otherwise, we're going to set the value to zero, which is false. And we're going to remind ourselves false or fail. So looking at this code, and I'll go through and give you one more kind of slow roll through. And then we'll go look in the editor one more time, and you'll kind of see where it all fits together. Now this, unlike my last couple of tutorials, this is a totally usable plugin. It's not just an example or a skeleton. So something like this you can actually directly use in a game. And so hopefully that'll help you kind of kickstart your own plugins. Okay, going back to the editor briefly. You now saw the code, so you can see why all these are filled in the way they are, why this parameter exists, and what the check variable, the result variable is. This is our check variable. Um, and then again, over here, in our plugin command, you can see why this is all filled in the way it is, why the letters are what they are. And there's our two arguments, our minimum number for success and our variable assigned, in this case, survival two. And I guess last but not least for thoroughness sake, I will show you using the debug window. And you reach the debug menu in the playtest by pressing F9. Um, mine's a little bit customized, but it'll look basically like this. Um, and we're going to look at our variables. Our survival is a one, so we get a plus one on our rolls. Okay, I really hope that was helpful, and I hope that you have a great time game making and coding, and thank you so much. Consider a like and subscribe.